I worked hard to save up a hundred dollars to get a phone consultation with Dorian's um, kind of mentor of sorts um, mm -hmm. named Mike Menser, who was a, unfortunately he's dead now, who was a proponent of very short, high intensity workouts. In his recount of meeting Mike Menser, Andrew Huberman reflects on the insights gained from the renowned bodybuilder's mentorship. Huberman recalls the prevailing assumption that achieving significant muscle mass required spending extensive hours in the gym, a notion dispelled by Menser's advocacy for short, high-intensity workouts. Despite Menser's untimely demise, Huberman vividly recalls his impact, including his unconventional approach to training and his caution against steroid use. Menser's emphasis on enjoying rigorous training resonated deeply with Huberman, fostering a genuine passion for physical exertion. Additionally, Menser's advice extended beyond the gym, encouraging Huberman to cultivate other interests, particularly his thirst for knowledge. Menser's skepticism towards traditional academia, symbolized by his reference to PhDs as piled high and deep, prompted Huberman to prioritize self-directed learning. Reflecting on Menser's influence, Huberman acknowledges the rarity of individuals who combine intellectual depth with physical prowess, citing Menser and Arnold Schwarzenegger as notable exceptions. Through Menser's mentorship, Huberman gleaned valuable insights into training philosophy and the importance of intellectual curiosity in personal development. And Which is not required actually to get that large. He had you know, bodybuilders like the famous Dorian Yates, who was famous for very short, high intensity workouts. Yeah. Probably one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. Actually, when I was in high school, I worked hard to save up $100 to get a phone consultation with Dorian's um, kind of mentor of sorts um, mm -hmm. named Mike Menser who was a, unfortunately he's dead now, who was a proponent of very short, high intensity workouts. I remember Mike calling- How short are we talking? We're talking sometimes 30 to 40 minutes twice a week or something. It was really excessive. Mike was also an, uh, known to be a bit of an amphetamine user. Nice. Um, so, you know, and unfortunately he and his brother Ray died young, but I remember um, my mother saying, you know, why is this grown man calling the house? And it was Mike Menser. Uh -huh. And what was interesting is he gave me some training programs and my, I reacted very well to those training, very infrequent, very high intensity training. But at that age, at 16, 18, 19, you know, you your do almost anything, respond, you're, you're yeah. on an so many circulating androgens. Yeah. Mike was a very smart guy and actually read a lot of Ayn Rand and was, was really kind of an intellectual of sorts. Um, and he was the one who said two really important things to me. Well, three, he said, first of all, don't use anabolic steroids because you're not going to become a competitor and it's just a waste of your health. Great advice and never did it. Later in life at 45, I can talk about this that I did a foray into low dose TRT. I, yeah. I've been open about this. So, yeah. and why and what it did. And it was for an experiment and for a book and some things. And I, I found some really interesting results related to testosterone and brain health. Okay. He said that, then he said, learn to really enjoy training hard. So I've come to develop this thirst for training hard. Yeah. I, I look forward to it. It doesn't feel like a pain to me. It feels like adventure and yeah. I love it. And then the third thing was he said, get good at something else. And you seem to like information. I highly recommend. He said, I don't believe anything PhD set say. He said he referred to him as PhD for piled high and deep. That's what he said. But he said, you seem to have a hunger for information. Yeah. So I think you should focus on school. I'm like, here I was, you know, 16. It took me a few years to really yeah. listen to that. Yeah. But it was it's still embedded in my brain. And so occasionally you get a guy like Menser who's really smart, who's, you know, got, you know, 20 inch arms and this kind of thing, or, or um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, obviously. Yeah. Th th there are some neurons firing in there. Oh yeah. So there are exceptions, but I think that um, by and large, um, you know, the jock phenotype and the intellectual phenotype are not always synonymous. Sure. Yeah. 